a lot of hate in the air. We got to talk about uh, some hate that the women's side is getting. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. pulled up to the pivot recently, uh, had Ooh. this to say about the women's game. Uh-oh. And they're very talented, but so is, so is a famous ping pong player. They're just as talented as, as a, like the best ping pong player is just as talented as the best basketball player. That doesn't mean they're going to get paid the same because it's because right. they play what, ping pong. It's what the people want to watch. You know what I mean? So, as much as I understand females wanting the same treatment as as men basketball players, it's 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 a different sport. People they're not packing out the arenas. Obviously, their TV deals aren't the same. So, as much as I advocate for women and kind of the equality of the respect of their craft and all those things. I mean, you can't pay them the same thing, you know, but I do feel like they should, there, there should be a little way to make a little bit more money for right. them because they are very talented. Right. Yeah, I think, the, I think the big thing, um, obviously, when you're thinking about negotiations, labor unions, and different things like that, I don't believe there's any woman that believes she should be paid as a man gets paid. It's more about the revenue share. It's more about the percentage and I think those things play mm. into it. And then the other side of it is treatment, mm. you know, within their own organizations. Like, they're never, like, they, they don't... Right, it's not make, as exciting. They, no, it's, it's not as it's exciting. It's not as exciting basketball. Yeah, you're not... They got a load of rims. I would watch a girl coming down the lane. <sighs> I don't know. Like, I would watch that. They need a load of They're actually... Um... <laughs> So, Lexi, you have some thoughts on MPJ's comments. Uh, floor is yours. Well, let me start by saying, I think his heart was in the right place. So I'm not here to shit on Michael Porter Jr. I do think he started, he started on the is right this? foot, and then he just kind of put his foot in his mouth. And, like, my issue with the pivot is they allow these guys to say things that they know is wrong, and they just, they just are like, okay, keep keep going, keep going, or they'll feed them more information for them to then double down on the f stupid shit that they had just said. So, I mean, there's like a lot to uh, unpack in his like statements, identifying us as females instead of women the whole time, um, that we can't get treated the same. And then he, he then says treatment to payment, which are two completely different things. We can still be treated with respect and they can respect our craft without us making 20 to $30 million a year. Like those things are not like those, th both of those things can happen. We cannot get paid $30 million and we can be respected and treated well for being professional basketball players. Lowering the rims comment, you already know how I feel about that. It's stupid. It doesn't benefit me personally at all because I'm you can't still dunk not gonna dunk. Yeah. I can't dunk on a 10-foot rim. I'm definitely not going to dunk on a 9-foot rim. It's going to fuck up my shooting. It's going to fuck up everybody's shooting. And I just feel like the way he plays basketball, like, he shoots a lot of threes. I just don't. You don't. He doesn't dunk. He wants us to dunk. You dunk. Like, what are we talking about? It's just, it's a tired conversation. And I'm, I'm very annoyed with men continuing to create these spaces to discuss these things when they don't watch our games. They don't know us. They don't ask us our opinions about anything ever and like if you don't have to watch us play that's fine but like for you to just sit there and just constantly shit on our craft our product and everything without really being tuned in like it's just not it's not right at this point but again you don't have to watch anything but y'all always want to talk about us so might as well watch us shit like damn okay i have a question okay What is the problem? What is the solution? Right. Now, if we can't, one, answer the questions, and we can't come to any resolve about any of the conversations that's being had, right? So a lot of times when we do ask the question, so what's the problem? Yeah. I mean, we everyone says the problem is the product. That's not the problem. There's great basketball being played throughout the entire W then we're, always, we're either getting compared to NBA, which everyone complains about how NBA is being played right now. So we either get compared to that, or we get compared to the three most marketed women's college basketball games of the entire women's college basketball season. So we're stuck in the middle, just getting, getting it from both sides. If we were 
out there playing bad basketball, like I would understand, but like that's that's not the case. So marketing, promotion, our equity and our uh, media deals, all that. It's like a very, it's a very layered issue. Let me ask you this. You said you're playing good basketball. You feel that. Yeah. So if we ask NBA players right now, are you guys playing good basketball right now? Do you think they would say yes? Consensus, it's like a consensus of, you, got, I mean, you, th- I, you guys they think- They say it publicly, so I can't, I can't hear their true opinions. But they would say, yeah, like we're playing good basketball. Yes. So the real consensus and the real judgment doesn't come from in the internal. Right. The players are always going to stay within the players' consensus. We're playing pretty good basketball. We don't feel like we're playing basketball. Bad, but then you go to the fans and us, who we can say, hey, the basketball is shit right now when we watch the NBA. it's not coming from our fans. It's uh, coming from... The people who have the voice. Whoever. People who don't right. really, really watch the game. That's, right. That's, yeah. But when you look at the fans don't have a voice as much as we do as interpreting what the fans are telling us and feeding us and we just push it out, right? Mm-hmm. So, like I said, the solution. What is the solution to you believing that y'all are playing good basketball but the fans are showing otherwise because they're not coming out to support which would change the sales, which would change the, uh, the, the concessions and all of the things that make the, 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 the W boom. Right. And even for the NBA. The NBA would boom more if everyone felt the basketball was really being played at a high level. Now, if we got a bunch of guys scoring at a high level as they are, 70s, 60s, 50s, how many ladies in the W are doing that, putting on a show? Right. Like uh, Asia. She was, what, 50, 55? Mm-hmm. Something like that, 57. That was the only outburst. And then you got Sabrina with the three-pointers. Those are the two things that we're looking at, like, all right, that will be entertaining. Enrique uh, in, in Dallas, she shows some glass, some, some, some stuff. Um, point guard uh, for the Aces is to uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. She shows her thing every now and again. But at the end of the day, where is the flash and dash? And we look at Juju. Mm-hmm. We look at Caitlin. Right. You look at Angel. Right. These are p- girls who are in college that give an inter- inter- entertainment quality, but they're not in a W. So when you talk about the solution, it's like, all right, you hear a bunch of people giving their opinion on the problem. We got to figure out how you guys can deliver the solution so it can be delivered to you guys. Because right. if there is no the solution, it's like you got to deal with everybody keep identifying the problem. But it's just... And I, and I completely understand where you're coming from, but it's like we're getting shit on because our team, our league is so small and so talented. Like, those, outbur- like, those outbursts are hard because you have a lot of good players, yep. players yep. on your team. Yep. So it's like, yeah, you'll, you'll get a, maybe a 50 ball here, a 40 ball there. But it's hard. And we actually be D'ing up. Like, right. I tell y'all that all the time. Like... Maybe we'll play less defense to like up the entertainment value, which I completely understand. But like the people watching, gotta understand when that happens. Like we're getting yelled at by our coaches and all these things. So it's like it's a cycle, and I think we're getting there. You know, we don't take as many threes as the NBA does yet. I think we're heading in that direction. I think this draft class and next year's draft class, I think they're gonna make a big effort to keep these players in the league. To keep the eyes on the league, but like that has nothing to do with us. Right. <clears throat> because I did my research on all of it. Um, the problem is that the WNBA girls that are in there now are too selfish to sacrifice today for the future. Mm-hmm. From day one, they handicapped American girls, right? So the American girls, if you're born in America, you have to go to college and play to a certain age. Right. Right, overseas girls who have no following, right? You don't have an American following, but because you turn pro at an early age, because there's no high school yeah. basketball, you can come into the NBA or the WNBA at 18, 19 years old. Well, the product that has the following here has to wait. So you're you're sitting in college now. Think about how college basketball is. For the most part, it becomes dinosaurish. Right. So for three years, whatever wild horse came into college basketball with their style out of high school has been whipped into a team type of player, a system player. When that system player gets into the W, 
She follows the rules. Mm -hmm. The problem with the W is if you don't allow the youth to come in and change the game, change it, right? You think about the, you, what I'm saying is you think about the Jujus and the Kellys and all those guys, if they come into the league right now, Tarasi them can't physically keep up with these girls, which means get the fuck out of the league already. Mm -hmm. Retire, retire, retire. These girls is too fast. They're moving too fast at a speed you can't keep up with. But if I get to play against another 40-year-old, because we get to sit in here at 40 years old, it is easy to play basketball then. Okay, but if I got to stick yeah. someone that's, think about Jeff Teague when he retired, right? At 30-something. It's because somebody was moving. Like, I can't keep up with these dudes. I'm out. Make room for somebody else. So what ends up happening is the product the, the, the thing that pushes the W into another category of money is sitting in college. Yep. It's, and it's been sitting in college. It's, it's always sitting. All your stars. In our draft class 2018, I think our entire first round picks are still actively mm -hmm. playing. But it has taken so many years for us to get our own names mm -hmm. and faces that whatever hype we had in college... It's lost. It's like yeah, non-existent yep. unless you're at an active social media, do other stuff. But then you've got to go to Europe and play. Now you're dark for eight months. Now you come back. You're like, oh, I'm back. And everyone's like, wait, who are you again? Yeah. You're to our me. draft pick? Like, like, like look at this class right here, right? The, the, the names you're saying. All of those, all those girls can stay in college one more year. Yeah. Right? They can stay in... In college, one more year, they have the most popular names amongst, if we say just women's basketball itself, some of those college girls would be yep. part of these, these names. Some of them might be in front of W, like yeah. one or two, like most famous basketball player right now. One of those college girls is going to be one or two, right? right? Yeah. And it's not a product inside the W, mm -hmm. which those are the girls that's going to move the needles. Those are the girls that's going to get all the lipstick thing. Think about the youth that follows them, right? Those are the ones who buys the jerseys, buys the products. Buy. They're the ones who put money into the game. The NBA, when Jordan retired the first time and they started using the youth, Kobe, KG, T-Mac, they started pushing the younger yeah. talent do you think if As he didn't thing. retire, that would have happened then? Probably not. Like, who's your, that's what I'm saying, who's the Trojan horse that takes the W, right? If you're saying it's Juju, then you need to make a rule where she can come okay. in now. She can come in now. Because the thing if about not, the rule is, you're talking it's about a rule. You don't, have to, you don't have to leave. So I've always been very much against that, letting them come out whenever rule, because then I think some girls will come out that shouldn't, and then, then what? But you don't but have to. What do I'm saying that. is, it shouldn't. Like, I'm not. Con like, that's what I'm saying. Like, the NBA. Kobe is not compared to Eddie Jones, right? That's who he's in front of. He's, he, Eddie Jones is an all star. This kid is 18. We're not on the same playing field. I know his trajectory, so he has a spot no matter what. Right. He's right. protected no matter what. My number one pick coming out of high school, 18, right? She is protected no, no matter what because, one, her understanding the hits, understanding being the pro, by the time she would have got in here versus, yep, like, she's, you know, even though she don't play this year, she battles with you guys in practice every day. By the time she, better. yeah, by the time it would be her regular rookie, rookie year, she'd be three years in, she might be a dominant pro by then, right? Those are what's missing in the game. Yeah. And then same thing, get rid of some of those dinosaur-ass coaches, right? <laughs> what is your offense? Do y'all run, run UCLA cut? No. How many teams actually run UCLA cut in the W? I don't think many anymore. Because I know, I know I was, uh, what was the coach from Detroit? Bill and, and Bill and Bear. I was watching a game where <laughs> I'm watching him. I'm like, wait, are they running UCLA? Is that the UCLA oh, flex yeah, when cut? Becky, when Becky came in. Yeah, like that. She shut all that shit down. Yeah, that's, that, but that's what I'm saying. You need to put speeds in. So if you guys shoot three, y'all y'all should be shooting 43s a game. Oh, I wait. agree. But I think, I hope in the new CBA, which is about to be renegotiated, rookie contracts become one of your guaranteed ones. I think that would help with this youth movement. 30, 35, and, 35 and over. Thir 32 and over. I don't have no value for you. Let's address the, the elephant in the room really is the ultimate sacrifice that the WNBA has to make is integrity of the game and entertainment value. This is the, the ultimate sacrifice the NBA made. When he's talking about when Michael Jordan mm -hmm. retired, the game changed the format. 
that allowed players who had the abilities to be more entertaining, to bring in more seat, seat fillers. So when you look at the, the WNBA, it's compared to, in my eyes, the EuroLeague. EuroLeague compared to the NBA is a totally different game because they play with integrity, it's boring, it's real basketball. And real basketball is boring mm -hmm. because you're running sets, you're, you're talking on defense, you're doing everything you're the whole shot clock. you learn from college. Is it, but is right? that real basketball? From, from where we come from, from the, from the foundation of it, right? Yeah. So then well, you look for, at the W, it's foundational basketball yeah. from college. So it looks like still college basketball, but it's just older women playing college yeah. basketball. It's not entertaining. So the sacrifice that needs to be made is when Juju and Caitlin and all of these other younger players come in, allow them to be more entertaining. Take the fossils out of the game, which are running the fossil players offenses. Players in right now that are entertaining like that. They just. Well, look, but, but we see them. But, but they're do, harnessed by but, coaches. Yeah, yeah. So but that's you got it. The sacrifice of the yeah. game. And so much rides on your if you win things instead of just how you how you play and how you carry yourself. And I think once we can separate that as well, like I think more players will be more comfortable just hooping. Like. Yeah. Yes, you want to win, obviously. If you're a good enough player, wins will come. But if you're out there hooping and you don't win a championship or you don't make it to the finals, like you can't be like, but that's what happens. That's what happens. In the happens NBA right now, how many box outs do you actually see? None. All right. The integrity of the game when it comes to box outs? Cool. Rotations. How many rotations do you truly None. see happening, right? When you talk about the sacrifice that was made is we don't hold them accountable for the small things that made basketball basketball anymore. Right. They let that go. But Be because we're women, it's like we have to do everything the right yeah, way. Everything, yeah. So but that But, but the right way is get it done. Get if it I done. got a girl that yeah. can come down if Caitlin, right? If she jacked. if she comes in and jack shots, that's her game, and she comes to the W and I say we don't play like that. Yes. I'm as I a coach, as, if I'm a coach, I did a dish justice yes. to the league yes. itself by doing 100%. that. 100%. She is famous. She is the number one two pick because of this style. Yes. If I do not adapt to this style, I, I ruin the agree. game for you. Lowering the rim for Duncan, you're not selling your game to NBA and dudes. There's a, there's, it's called women's basketball. There's women out there everywhere that supports the game. So you lowering the rim to seven foot and six foot, who gives a fuck what we think? My daughter's not watching the game for Duncan. Right. She's not watching the game for this. She's watching the game for what it is because that's how she plays it. So that's your fan base. You have to... Oh, yeah, right, women. I'm like high school... Girls. Think, think about high school girls and college girls. Your fan base... They play a whole different, think about what I'm saying. They live a whole different style and play a whole different style than you. They dress, they, they roll their they little shorts up, thigh. Y'all got a long shorts. Y'all are old women to them. Right? I don't wear long shorts. Yeah, no, I'm just saying for the most part. Y'all, so y'all. I'm real cute <laughs> on that word, please. No, think, so think about it. When you guys come into the draft, y'all got on suits, business women stuff. What, the, what do you think a 16-year-old girl is looking at? What the hell is that? We need to, we need to pull up uh, my draft class picture. No, I'm just saying for just consent. I don't think we have, I think no, we I'm have just saying, one or two. No, I'm just saying, but, they, but you, you, you are women. Yeah. But your audience is girls. Yeah. Right? So it's two different. So there's a, there's a bridge that's gone because you're 22. These girls are 16, 17, 18. So the look that they have versus what they see is very different and to them. That's, that's great that you said that because I was just with a bunch of women in like the fashion and entertainment industry. And I had, I had been meeting them for the first time and one of the, they all said it. I had no idea that uh, WNBA players looked like you. Mm -hmm. I've never seen one. And I was like, damn. That's what I've been trying to tell people though. <laughs> Cause people think I get in my feelings because I'm not the, I don't get promoted. I don't do this. I'm not one of the WNBA faces, whatever. No, I don't care. I'm doing my own thing. I love playing basketball, it's cool. But I didn't grow up seeing girls look like me mm -hmm. out there, their hair done, their nails done, their lashes, makeup on. I love all of that, as long as you take care of business on the court. Mm -hmm. But I've had a group of women, like my age, a little older maybe, tell me that they have. this is the first time they've seen a WNBA player that looks like me. And I'm just kind of like, 